Hello everyone, it's Tom here again and thanks for joining me on this sixth uh, video of my playlist on building up a plant from the products inside the AEC collections. Um, so we've already gone through doing a pen ID, uh, we've done some equipment models, so you can see here my tree, we've done an equipment model. So I have gone through and uh, put in some more of the equipment that we have on the PNID. So we've got some reboilers, we've got some tanks, uh, some fans. Um, and then I've also gone through and pretty much completed the main structure. So the main pipe rack going down the middle uh, of my project. So if it looks familiar to anyone, uh, it's because this is basically a metric version of the sample project inside Plant 3D. So I've gone through and, and basically rebuilt it as a, as a metric project. So we've got our structure here and uh, we've obviously done our catalogs and specs in the meantime. So what we're going to do is uh, start building some pipe work um, from those PNIDs into uh, our equipment. So uh, we've got our equipment folder, structural folder. So I'm just going to make a new folder and bring the dialog box over. I'm going to call it piping. Uh, and because we're working in area one, so I'm going to create a new drawing, call it area one, PIP for piping, dash 1000 for the first file. And go okay. So because our equipment and structure is in the correct places that we want them to be, uh, we really don't have to do anything other than right click on the file, X ref it into the current drawing, zoom extents, and there you can see our equipment in its right location. So, same thing with uh, our structural model. You can see here everything sitting in its correct location. So, I am finding that. Over here with these uh, these fans, these coolers, I'm going to have to manipulate them a little bit, but that's something uh, I'm going to go through a little bit later on. So uh, I've got for today. I'm just going to concentrate on these pumps over here um, and this reboiler here. So we're just going to pull up the pen ID for it. So it's showing up as P1004. I think that might be on the last one. There it is. So we've got a four inch line coming out of it in carbon steel 300 and it's going off to drawing number two. So I can just click on this, go open connected drawing and it shows us that same line number coming from over there over to this, uh, this reboiler. So we can see that it's coming in to this back nozzle over here. So if I look at my model, then we can see that uh, we've got the lines coming out of the discharge uh, up to this nozzle here. So we know that it's line number 1029 and it's coming from P1004. So here's P1004. And here is P1005. Now I can instantly see also that my nozzles um, might be wrong as well, but I can see that there's a four inch and a six inch suction. Uh, and what have we got here? We have a four inch discharge and a six inch suction, so we're not too bad there. So I can do a couple things in regards to the routing here. So I can pull up my line list. So it's 1003 and 1029. So if I come back over here, so 1003, line number 1029, and I'm going to place the item. Now, depending on your project, whether you've done this before, it's going to come up. Uh, it's got, you know, whether it's the, the, the catalogs and specs, because I'm using Imperial and metric, it's going to come up and start asking me for these mappings. So I just know that four inch is always going to be 100. So I'm just going to say select. So we already have our line number, size, spec, service, and number. And you can see it's changed to size, spec, 
uh, and number there. So I'm going to connect from this node. And just to show you what the auto routing looks like, I'm turn off the sloping. And then I'm going to connect to the node of the other pipe there. So it's come up with eight different solutions. So if I do N and enter, so I'm going to get my eight different solutions for this pipe run. Okay. So they're all a little bit out of whack. But this one doesn't seem to be too bad. So you can see we've got a couple of elbows here. I'm not going to worry about that pipe going through the floor at the moment, but I'm going to accept it. So what I'm going to do to resolve that is I'm going to turn the pipe bends back on. So convert to pipes and bends. So I'm just going to erase that pipe and then what I'm going to do is change the elevation bottom of pipe to be 2500 so now we've got that pipe sitting just underneath the grating there and then I can also switch to wireframe mode and it might be a bit hard to see on the video but what I'm going to do is go into my equipment model and just hide the grading. So there we've got the end of the run and I'm going to go to node and connect it back up. And you can see we've got a nice little connection there. So that was for line number 29. And obviously line number 30 comes in off that as well. So I'm just going to do line number 30, place the item go node of the nozzle and the pump and go perpendicular to that line and then you can see that it's automatically created that run. So if I put it back to realistic mode then you can see there we've got our pipe runs all sort of nice and neat they're just underneath uh, the grating there so what we could do if we were to throw some more beams in there we could run some hangers off that uh, whether they might be just uh, bolted to the to the floor above, we might put in some T's in here maybe, again it all depends, you might have a, an engineer who's going to do stress calculations on it, it might need more elbows and bends in it, uh, again that'll be something for uh, your engineer to, to look at. So these, these suction lines are coming from those fans so I need to go through and put up some nozzles on these cooling towers or fans over here and then run those suction lines down. So there's obviously a lot more work to do, um, but that's really how we go about um, placing pipe runs off the PNID. So I'm just going to draw some lines out here in the middle of nowhere. If you don't have PNIDs, you can come in here and click on Route New Line and it'll ask you for a number if you're using it. You don't have to have the number to start off with, but you don't have to also use the auto routing. You can just start typing in values if you need to. So I can go two meters by 1500, or just use my mouse. To change axes, you press control and right click, and you can see the compass is going to change direction there. So. Uh, what we can do as well is um, create pipe runs that don't have welds in them either. Um, plus as well, uh, I guess you could maybe use them for, for tubing um, and, and places where you don't need welds. Um, and plus as well, we also have the functionality to uh, be able to um, convert lines, uh, lines to pipes. So what you could do uh, in theory is um, trace a, a center line from an existing model or um, uh, maybe if you've got a, a tricky way of, of overlaying sort of 2D views from an old um, model then you can trace the center lines and start getting some elevations off that 
Um, there is also a function in there called PCF to pipe, so we can import a PCF from another plant package, whether it's another plant model um, or a one of our competitors, they will export a PCF and then we can import them as long as we can match up um, the, uh, the, the pipe sizes and obviously all of the specs. So that's really it for, for covering some of this, this piping. Um, next week we're going to have a look at doing orthos. So I'm going to create some orthos uh, from this um, and then just start generating a, a few 2D drawings. So thanks a lot for watching um, and I'll see you in a fortnight with uh, a more completed piping model ready for some documentation.